Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Hope you guys are all having a wonderful time. So we just actually got info on the content update or patch notes for Path of Exile 3.24 uh, Necropolis League. And I want to go ahead and talk to you guys about the state of Righteous Fire. Now, obviously, I haven't played it yet, right? These are just the patch notes, but usually from the patch notes, we can figure out what is good, what is strong, and the new interactions kind of pop up. So I'm going to go ahead and drag over some notes for you guys. And before I get started, RF has not necessarily gotten nerfed. It got a little bit of an indirect defensive nerf, specifically on the Chieftain variant, uh, which I'll talk about more in a little bit. The state of current Righteous Fire, if we're talking about League Start, budget friendly, new player friendly, I'll just be very upfront and honest. I think it's still a fantastic build for rushing to T16 content, grabbing your two Void Stones, although the bosses might be a little bit sketchy, very doable, uh, but scaling past your T16 viability is going to be a bit difficult. Now, when I talk about T16 viability and your Void Stones, I do think you can also pretty easily acquire your uh, last two Void Stones, so that would be from Maven and Uber Elder. Do note that I'm refer when I'm going to refer to Ubers in the rest of the context in this video, I'm not referring to Uber Elder, I'm referring to real Ubers, so that would be like Uber Maven and etc. Uber Elder is a Void Stone boss, so that's just part of like the core progression. All right, so with that being said, I'm going to read through these and then we'll get back to that initial conversation. So right here is pretty much everything that has affected Righteous Fire in some type of way. Um, so starting off with the beginning, cycling damage reduction. You ever come across those mobs that say cycling damage reduction? They're literally like immune to your damage. Well, instead of them now becoming um, basically immune, they're now going to be resistant. Resistance, Chieftain ignores. So this is a Chieftain buff because Chieftain does not care about this mod at all. So this makes Chieftain a little bit smoother in your mapping experience against those tanky rares. So that's kind of cool. This is the nerf I was referring to. They talked about this last week. Uh, Ruby, Sapphire, and Topaz flasks used to grant 20% less damage taken. This is incredibly powerful on builds that convert damage, specifically physical, to elemental, and then get 90 max res, and then scale flask effect to further reduce this damage. Um, this is definitely a targeted nerf for people who do that. Unfortunately, on Chieftain, we easily achieve 90 max all res, thanks to the Chieftain Ascendancy nodes. So there's two ways to look at this. Number one, you can use something like a Trader Keystone setup, which is a Legion Keystone that allows you to get uh, bonus flash charges or flash charges in general when you're not doing anything. You can use this to get close, pretty much 100% uptime on your Ruby Flask. This would give you five max res that you can see here. Um, and then you could decide to replace your shield option. Instead of a Rise of the Phoenix, you could use a Saffle's Frame. Or maybe if you want to be a little spicy, you could drop Purity of Fire in favor of maybe something else. The other way to look at this is on the super high end version for people who like to go mage blood. I don't really like to talk about this stuff too much, but on the crazy high end variants, this might open up a transcendence option for Chieftain because transcendence lowers your max res, but makes it so that your armor protects your against against your um, sorry, protects against your elemental damage. So this might end up making like an immortal Chieftain build, but we'll worry about that like later into the league. So Defiance of Destiny did not get nerfed. This was a core item for survivability in our Chieftain. It was not necessary for any form of like content. It was mainly to make you immortal during mapping when you're doing juiced maps and you have five frames per second because there's literally 500 monsters on the screen. This is where Defiance of Destiny comes in. The trade-off of using an amulet versus going block cap, uh, spell block cap, and then getting life gain on block the amulet is totally worth using over that. So this is kind of where that comes in. So in this league, they brought back tattoos. So I highlighted a couple of tattoos here. Um, the Tukahama Shaman provides 0.3% life regen, previously 15. Uh, to break even on this, you need, I believe, 5,000 HP. And all my builds get above 5k HP. So this is a slight buff. Nothing really crazy here. I will say for the Ivory Tower builds that Captain Lance plays, this is a fantastic buff for those, assuming they ever run this. Uh, I'm sure they're too busy strength stacking, but still, maybe a couple of these can help flesh out regeneration here and there, so that's something kind of neat. Uh, Warmonger provides 5% fire damage. I don't really care for this. When you are min-maxing your builds, or even not even min-maxing, but just trying to achieve higher numbers, typically increased damage is the last on the priority when it comes to multipliers and other sources. So kind of cool, but not really very impressive. 
Uh, Volaco Scout provides reduced effective shock. This can pair very well because I don't like to run Tempest Shield anymore. I like to squeeze in as much damage as possible. So sometimes getting reduced shock effect on a jewel and or on a flask and then finishing it up with some of these tattoos can provide full on shock immunity outside of very few instances like Expedition. So this is pretty nice. Tattoo of the Warmonger uh, used to provide 2% chance to explode dealing fire. Uh, that's deleted from the game. Um, saw that one coming. We play Chieftain. That's totally fine. Sucks, but totally fine. Uh, Soul Eater buff has been reworked. Soul Eater basically got nerfed. There's no longer going to be like immoral Soul Eater mobs. This doesn't really matter, but I know the community really doesn't like this. I personally find them to be funny because usually I have very tanky builds. So you just have some mob whacking you like 50 times a second. Uh, instant cast skills can no longer be bound to left click. I guess there's another nerf I forgot. Um, this means no more Molten Shell on left click. This means you're going to want to automate or manually press your Molten Shell or you can use a new support gem that came out called Automation. I personally am not really a big fan of this. I think I would rather just use Pass When Damage Taken instead of Automation. Um, I do think Automation is really cool for some other builds, but we're not going to jump into those. So in this league, they're introducing Tier 17 maps. Tier 17 maps are above Tier 16, but with a massive jump in difficulty. The Tier 17 maps are going to drop pieces to fight Ubers, um, Ubers are kind of different now with how you uh, gain access to them, but the tier 17 maps are going to be very difficult with their own set of mods. This is where I'm a little concerned about my build because it's not going to have like a linear progression. I mean, to be fair, no build should have a straight linear progression where you just go tier one, you know, tier 16, tier 17. They specifically stated that tier 17 is going to have a big bump. The problem is with them gutting the plus to level gem scaling on Righteous Fire in the previous league, it's just a lot harder to scale your overall damage now because you're pretty much just scaling fire trap after you hit like five to six thousand HP. This is where I'm a little concerned and we'll get more into this a little bit later. So domination on the Atlas uh, costs three chaos. Um, three chaos is pretty cool because it adds three shrines. I only highlighted this because it's like extra density and I'm primarily playing or marketing RF now as a mapper, even though to be fair, we always did just focus on mapping. It's just they're pushing they're making the game more and more like less RF friendly for end game bossing, basically, right? That's okay. We'll figure stuff out. Uh, no more instant cast war cry. They remove call to arms of the tree. I never personally ran call to arms except for very early league start when I am doing expedition money making strat. I spawn all the mobs, press infernal cry, and then kaboom them. So this, there is a support gem to make it automated, but for some reason. There is no support gem to make it instant. It's only to make it automated and instant. So I don't, I, I like to have control over my war cries. So this one's kind of a question mark for me. I'm just going to put that right there. Um, so this is a very big one. This is kind of spicy, um, not regarding RF in general, but just a massive game change. The seventh gate, which was the one that allowed you to take every single um, thing for Kirak uh, before they would have cycles where there's only certain things available on Kirak, like light, expedition, harvest. That's been removed. I think Kirak just has everything now. Um, growing Hordes, which was you turn sextant, sorry, Scarabs into pack size. Uh, All Hands was the chance to spawn ma uh, monster, sorry, masters in your map, like super, super high, but you can't gain master missions. Stream of Consciousness, which is you gain base chance to spawn all league mechanics, but you cannot use fragments. Grand Design, which was 1% pack size of monsters per notable but baby nodes don't do anything. And Wandering Path was your baby nodes are doubled, but you get nothing from notables have all been removed. So completely different meta for League Starting Atlas. Very excited for this. Their primary uh, thought behind this or reason was if things feel mandatory and necessary, they kind of want to remove them because then you don't have as much control. Like if, if you're just always doing the same strategy because it's too good, it kind of overshadows other things. And I can kind of agree there. Um, if you're trying to climb straight T16, it was always go wandering path, always go wandering path. So overall thoughts, I think RF Chieftain will be the new league start RF map blaster, but fall short on Uber content slash T17 maps until unless heavily geared, in which case you're no longer a league starter. Now, if you guys haven't kept up with my live streams and you just watch the YouTube content, um, you might not know that Chieftain is now my new favorite for Righteous Fire. In the past, I was not really a big fan on it, a fan of it, 
primarily because the ascendancy nodes require you to stand still and it just seemed, it seemed a little bit gimmicky so i didn't really give it i gave it a fair chance but not as fair of a chance with them i'm just gonna say destroying righteous fire's end game potential for the way i league start uh if you want examples my end game versions lost about 80 percent of their righteous fire damage um this pushes me more into chieftain and let me explain why so when you are clearing with righteous fire your goal is to shield charge and the mobs die like that's the primary reason you play righteous fire is it's a relaxing lazy build where you're just shield charging and mobs are dying the problem is you literally can't scale your damage to be that high anymore unless you are putting unethical amounts of currency into your character or you are like dual wielding with some other shenanigans but then you're not going to be as tanky chieftain comes with a special benefit where chieftain has this beautiful explode node along with the minus fire res node which i will just show for people who don't know so this node here on chieftain ramako sunlight nearby enemies have minus 20 fire res not a very good ascendancy node for bossing because you can strip monster res far past minus 20. however mapping and bossing are two very different mechanics when you are mapping there are sources of resistance that appear out of nowhere so like your map mods monsters have 40 le res the arc nemesis mod uh monsters are fire and ignite resistant uh rares with elemental resistance auras monsters with endurance charges monsters who are ghosted who gain endurance charges uh monsters who are uh what is it like some of the arakali touch brine king touch they gain bonus le res a lot of these factors make monsters crazy tanky chieftain doesn't care chieftain is you are minus 20 res it doesn't matter if you have 249 fire res if you are stationary they have minus 20 res now comes the question of but you're stationary when you are shield charging in path of exile for the sake of this context ramako sunlight works is very cool so basically when you are scaling your damage you don't have to walk up to the mob use flammability use elemental weakness apply your fire exposure make sure you have legacy fury on for scorch chieftain is just you are minus 20. this makes map progression so incredibly smooth especially when you are on red maps and you're volleying for completion and you're getting all these outrageous modifiers this is where chieftain's league start viability really peaks up so this is a big pro to him again when we go back to bossing though his damage is limited so when I compare him to the other league start that I like to play, which is my RF Inquisitor with Atula and Corrupted Soul, Inquisitor will pull uh, pull through basically on the bossing. We'll have a bigger EHP pool so you can make more mistakes. It'll have more overall regeneration and it will deal more single target. But when you come to map clear, when you start juicing content, it will fall short. I think Inquisitor is still a fantastic league starter. It's just... As you want to do more difficult content, it will become significantly more expensive. Whereas Chieftain is just, I proc this Ascendancy node, Hinokora Death Fury, which may not seem like it occurs often, but 1 in 20 monsters, if a pack has 10 to 15 monsters, this is happening every other pack. I have probably leveled now 10 to 15 Chieftains, like legit. And this is an extremely strong node. It is much more consistent than it seems due to the sheer amount of monster density in this game. So these two nodes here are what makes Chieftain an excellent mapper for League Starts. Furthermore, when we go a little bit more into this, you have the Sallow Cleansing Water, which means all you do is stack Fire Res. And when you're on your bench and you're crafting Resistance, you're crafting Fire and Chaos Res. This means you can easily hit Chaos Res and by crafting fire res on all of your gear you are capped on all your res so this is another way that chieftain kind of pulls forward in terms of beginner friendly then you have the last node Volaco storm embrace which makes it to your maximum fire applies to your cold and lightning this means you can use really cheap interactions like a rise of the phoenix that gives you normally only five max fire now gives you five max all res so cheap uniques cheap league starter works very well to map blast so going a little bit further now um juggernaut i used to play juggernaut a lot with the changes to righteous fire it feels like i cannot get enough damage to clear quickly on juggernaut 
And if I cannot clear maps quickly on Righteous Fire, I don't really want to play it because that's the primary reason for me. If it takes me too long to kill bosses and I can't clear fast, I would rather pick a different build. I want my build to feel good at something, right? Inquisitor doesn't lack as much damage, but it's harder to skill your map clear. I will also state one thing where when I play the Inquisitor build, if you guys played it last league, I like to go Corrupted Soul with Atula's body armor. Atula gives you up to a thousand maximum life, uh, which scales very well with Corrupted Soul, giving you life as energy shield. This gives you a very big effective life pool between your life and your energy shield, which means you get a bunch of upfront base damage on Righteous Fire. This makes clearing very smooth on Inquisitor until you want to start really juicing. That's where it starts to fall short because you have all this base damage, but it's harder to scale because you can't use plus gem anymore. So for a standard league star, if you've played Inquisitor and you like it, it's still totally solid. Do note that if we summarize it, Chieftain, in my opinion, is the better mapper. Inquisitor is the better bosser. For people who want to push into endgame and currency is not a problem for you, I'm going to show a couple of... Not really show, but I'm just going to talk about them. If you looked at my super endgame Righteous Fire build from this league, I hit about 14.5 mil damage combined with RF and Fire Trap. So when I, combi when I say combined, that means 1.5 mil is RF and the rest of it is Fire Trap. That is the adorned Mage Blood RF Chieftain, probably around 400 Divines. Ridiculous investment, probably more expensive uh, in this future league, but pretty much immortal. Then there's the same thing, but on RF Inquisitor, this is when I go Aegis Melding. Now, you don't have to go uh, the Corrupted Soul with a Tula setup, but the reason I like it is you get so much more effective life than this version. This version is way more tanky. The other one does more damage on a smaller budget, a much smaller budget, because Aegis Melding means you're investing into max res, you're investing into block chance, so you're not going to have as big of an HP pool which is fine for survivability, but when it comes to damage, your RF is going to suffer. Then we have the version I didn't get to play, but I kind of wanted to peek at, which is the version Captain Lance plays, which is the Ivory Tower, I believe, Scion. This is a, um, essentially, I think it's a strength in stacker, primarily, it's primarily on strength, where you stack a bunch of strength, stack a bunch of life, reserve your life, get a bunch of energy shield, and you are doing pretty good damage on your RF, but I don't think these are cheap. You can set up budget versions, but I don't have any of them and I don't want to I don't want to tell you to do it without having an actual guide for it. I know you can definitely do something early game with Ghost Ride that's a body armor, but again, without me playing them, I don't really want to make the content on it. This is something I want to investigate more this league specifically. Then you have the Monastack Righteous Fire, the guy one mono left makes them. I don't think he does any budget version, he does really high versions. The reason I don't like Mana Stack Righteous Fire, I played a bit of Arcane Righteous Fire. Mana archetypes, to my knowledge, get their defensive layers from essentially either A, having a very big effective mana pool, which then can turn into an energy shield pool, um, which is your primary defensive layer, or B, corrupted implicits and very unique niche gearing. They feel very tanky against specific content, but since I primarily map, it feels weak for mapping defensively compared to what I'm used to. I will say of all the variants, this one here is by far the easiest to scale damage, but it does feel the most gimmicky. I will also state that getting life regen on this variant is by far the most difficult versus the others. And also going into this, Chieftain has a bit of a struggle with life regen compared to Inquisitor and Juggernaut variants, However, because it easily achieves 90 max res, it kind of gets that regeneration back just a little bit later into the game. Anyway, I hope that this video helped you guys out. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash box. Also, do note that over here on my Wikipedia, I will be updating this thoroughly since I didn't do a very good job lastly because I was waiting to see if they would change anything. The RF Chieftain League Starter right here is currently what I'm working on. If you click copy URL from right over here and you go into path of building and you import it, you can already see that I have started on the beginning parts. So if you want to get started with doing a League Start simulation, you can pretty much come over here. You can go to the tree and see that at 1 to 20, you've got a little basic template. Over here, 1 to 20, there's some text on items. And then under the skill section, same thing. 
If you have played the Juggernaut version, this is very similar during the campaign, changes a little bit later. If you want to keep playing, make sure that you drop the sections down and follow everything accordingly. So if you change this to 21 to 40, you change this to 21 to 40, and you change this to 21 to 40. This will pretty much take you all the way through uh, the campaign, and then I'll be adding more content to this as I uh, get some more time since the patch notes just came out. Other than that, don't forget, you can check out the FAQ here if you get some problems with your RF build, and the crafting will have to update as well. So that's pretty much it. Thanks everyone so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.